Most analog oscillators provide a stock of really cool waveforms such as a triangle, sawtooth, pulse wave and so on. However, there are some techniques that can help achieve many more waveforms and timbers. One of these is frequency modulation and we will talk about that in today's video. Coming up! Every time we modulate an oscillator frequency with another oscillating signal, we are doing frequency modulation. If our modulating signal is an LFO, we call this modulation vibrato. We can easily create a vibrato with Falistri and the 321 utility module, so let's see how it works. Let's set the green oscillator to loop and its time scale to fast to obtain an oscillator. Then let's patch its bipolar output to our CGM. It will be our carrier oscillator. For now, we can keep the wave shapes too linear and achieve a classic triangle wave. Then, let's apply the same settings to the yellow oscillator. Patch its bipolar output to one of the 3 to 1 inputs and its output to the green volt per octave input. It will be our modulator oscillator. Make sure that the inverter and the offset switches are off. If we gently increase the signal level with the 3 to 1, we start hearing a vibrato effect, like the familiar modulation wheel on keyboard synthesizers. The timber, though, still sounds like a triangle wave. Now let's make the modulator faster and faster. At this point, it no longer sounds like a tremolo. What happened is that the modulating signal became faster than 20 Hz and it became an audio signal. Even if we don't hear it directly in the mixer, we can still hear its effect over the carrier oscillator. We can no longer perceive the modulator's individual oscillation, but we hear it as a sound. In fact, if we patch it to the CGM as well, we can hear a low triangle wave. We must note that there is no physical difference between an LFO and an oscillator, since they are both voltage fluctuations. The only difference is in our ears and in our subjective hearing range. So when we modulate an oscillator's frequency at audio rate, what we hear is the interaction of both oscillator's frequency that result in a new timbre. What FM does is creating sidebands. Remember, we talked about them while discussing amplitude modulation and ring modulation. Both ring modulation and amplitude modulation introduce external elements in the audio signal called sidebands. In amplitude and ring modulation, the sidebands are the sum and the difference of the two oscillator's frequencies. In frequency modulation, this is not always the case for two reasons. The first one is that the frequency of the sidebands depends on whether our frequency modulation is exponential or linear. More on this later on in this video. The second reason, however, is that the number of sidebands depend on a third parameter that we need to consider, the modulation amount. So let's go briefly back to our vibrato. Uh, when we do it, we can choose how fast should it go, which is its frequency, but we must also choose how wide should it be, which is uh, how much should it shift our oscillator's frequency up and down. In this patch, we change the, the modulation amount through the 3 to 1 amplifier. Let's bring our modulating signal back to audio rate. Even in this case, a different modulation amount creates different timbers because it generates more or fewer sidebands. So, to sum up, in FM synthesis we have two main parameters through which we can change our sound's timbre, which are the oscillator's frequencies and the modulation amount. At this point, it is worth noting that the new sidebands that we introduce by increasing the modulation amount kinda subtract energy from the original carrier's frequency, but also from the sidebands that we already had. In other words, while increasing the modulation amount, the overall signal's amplitude stays the same. But some of you may have noticed something strange, which is that the pitch of our carrier oscillator changes as we increase the modulation amount. How so? The reason is that we are doing exponential FM, and the key to understand it is in this symbol over here. This symbol marks a volt per octave input. The volt per octave standard increases an oscillator's frequency by one octave per volt. In other words, every positive increment of one volt doubles the oscillator's frequency. This behavior is exponential and corresponds to the musical interval that we generally use to make music. As a consequence, when we patch a bipolar LFO to a volt per octave input, it modulates our oscillator by the same musical interval, but the frequency increment and decrement are completely different. For example, let's say that our carrier oscillator has a frequency of 440 Hz. If our modulator has an amplitude of 2 volts peak to peak, which means that it goes up 1 volt and down 1 volt, our 440 Hz will oscillate between 880 and 220. 
This is kind of a problem because when we do audio rate frequency modulation we perceive as the main frequency the average frequency between the highest and the lowest peak. So even if our frequencies can be translated in musical terms as three A's on three different octaves, the central frequency is not our previous one which is 440 Hz. Our ear will thus perceive as the main pitch the average frequency between 880 and 220 which is 550 not 440. So since the volt per octave standard is exponential and since the way we apply such a modulation to our carrier oscillator is exponential, this technique is called exponential frequency modulation. But it's not over. Exponential FM also has another quirk that becomes more evident once we start to play with notes. So let's make a variation of this rudimentary FM patch that allows us to control both oscillator speeches. First, we need to duplicate our volt per octave signal by using the first section of our 333. So we will patch the first one to the yellow volt per octave input and the second one to the green one. But the green oscillator is already receiving a signal. We'll thus use another section of the 333 to combine the volt per octave signal with the FM modulator. The 333 sections are semi-normal, so it is sufficient for us to just patch the yellow bipolar output to the second input of the second section to combine it with the volt per octave signal patched to the first one. Now we can patch the second section's output to the green volt per octave input. Again, if we keep our modulation amount at zero, we can hear the two oscillators play. Once we increase the modulation amount, we can hear the frequency detuning that we talked about. If we keep increasing the modulation amount, we can come up with consonant sounds. But here's what happens once we change our notes. It is dissonant again. How so? The reason is that with exponential FM the modulation amount is different for every note. We saw that if we modulate an A at 440 Hz by plus and minus one octave, its frequency will oscillate between 220 and 880, so the modulation bandwidth will be of 660 Hz. However, if we modulate a B whose frequency is different than A, its modulation bandwidth will be much higher. The first result is that the perceived pitch will get higher and higher than the note's nominal value. The second result is that the frequency of the sidebands is much harder to calculate, being the modulation amount unbalanced across the carrier's frequency. The fact that we cannot play musical intervals with exponential FM shouldn't refrain us from using it in our patches. For example, we can use a Sapel's sample and hold circuit to change the modulator's frequency and its fluctuating random voltages to control the modulation amount via Falistri's 4 quadrant multiplier. Then we can patch Sapel's clock output to the slew limiter to obtain a very simple but effective envelope. We can also replicate this exponential FM patch with the Brainso oscillator in a more refined form. We can use either oscillator as carrier or modulator and activate the exponential frequency modulation through a dedicated circuit with two controls. This defines the amplitude of the modulator, which by default is the other oscillator's sine wave. This other one is the deviation control, which defines the modulation bandwidth. The cool thing about Brainso is that we can voltage control the modulation amount. You may have noticed that by using sine waves on the brain, so we end up with a timber which is more mellow than Falister's one, which used the triangle waves. And the reason is that sine waves have just one harmonic. With brain so, however, we can use other waveforms both as carrier or modulators, and even process the result of such a modulation through the wave folder and then through the four quadrant multiplier. When we do exponential FM with other waveforms than the sine wave, the result is way richer in harmonics and even sharper. We can also use an external sound to modulate any of Brainsaw's oscillator, like Falistri. Or even some Sapel's noise. Now some of you may wonder, but what if I do want to play melodies with FM just like I do with amplitude modulation or ring modulation? The answer is that exponential FM is not the only FM. There is also linear frequency modulation where we can calculate the sidebands in a much more predictable way and achieve a modulation that let us keep any pitch information. But we will talk about linear FM in the next video, so see you there!